Hi, this is Patrick Driggett, coach of the Berlin Fire, and this is BS of the Week. We're covering week two of the Big Sky, have our results in as we wait for this long timer to go forward. But uh, before then, we have a lot of uh, fun stuff to do. I'm joined by my friends. Hi there, this is Kevin Lucy from the Glasgow Rushmores, and this week we've got a special guest, which is... Uh, I'm Sam, and I, uh, Sam Andrews, and I'm from the uh, Darlington Super Devils, uh, sorry, Sun Devils. My change. They're, they're they're pretty super to me, Sam. The Freudian slip there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm wishing they're super. Yeah. Well, you're doing a good job, so I'm, I'm sure they'll get there soon. Um. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Sam. We're excited to have guests again. You know, picking the show back up, having guests is always our favorite part because we get to you know hear all these cool opinions. Because Kevin and I, we just ramble on ourselves. So, you know, good to have interesting viewpoints in here. Um. So to start, we had our week two games, had some some fun stuff happen, some surprises. Uh, it was it was a good week. And Kev, why don't, why don't you talk through the results of those week two games? Yeah, okay. Uh, here's the, the BS review of the week, as it were. Uh, first game up, Packers against the Bulldogs, uh, 42-3. Um, basically here, the, the scoreline tells it all. Unfortunately, Miranda wasn't really uh, in the game. Solid game from Tom. Uh, the only comment I would really make is that his quarterback, Baldridge, in my opinion, should have got the MVP. Uh, any quarterback that throws 364 yards, uh, passes 17 out of 19 completions, uh, has an 89% completion rate and a ranking of 150. If he doesn't get MVP, he's got to be asking what the hell has he got to do to get it. Uh, they gave it to his tight end instead. But good win there for Tom. Uh, nice and straightforward. Phoenix against the Rushmores, 30-3. Uh, to uh, One-way traffic, this really. Uh, Ian had me well and truly beaten. Uh, the Rushmore just simply couldn't run the ball. Uh, and what's even more perturbing, especially with my game next uh, week or whenever we, come, we get to play, Patrick, is that I couldn't stop the run either, which does not bode well for a, a game, a team that rushes. Um, so safe win there for the Phoenix. Surfers against the Rapiers, 31-21. And this was a tight game. Um, this was all square. Uh, until the final quarter. Uh, and then basically what happened in the final quarter was there was an interception thrown uh, on their own 10-yard line. Okay, and that obviously led to a touchdown. And then um, the surfers had the sense to keep the ball for four minutes, uh, gave it back to the rapiers uh, with the clock ticking on about 58 minutes and 20-odd seconds. Um, so good, solid win that, but an, an interesting one. Um, Rough Riders against the Bombers, 21 5, uh, sorry, 21 15. Um, good solid win this for, for Peter. Um, the strange thing with this game, and a lot of games this week actually, is this game followed a pattern. And that pattern was that the losing team actually shifted the ball for more yards than the winning team. Mm. And that happened in something like seven or eight of the games, my, my own game included, and I think also Sam's game included. Uh, we managed to actually shift the ball more than the opposition, yet they beat us. Uh, and this is something we're probably going to um, come back to uh, in future shows. But it does sort of demonstrate, if you like, that moving the ball isn't necessarily it. It's the big plays that seem to really matter and the times when you make the big plays. But as I say, we'll come back to that one. Um, Sun Devils against the 66ers, uh, 25 to 10 to, to the 66ers. Um, again, uh, as I say, another losing side, as it were, that shifted the ball more than the, the winning side. Uh, Craig, I have to say you are making one hell of a start to your uh, <laughs> gridiron career. Uh, and Yeah, and I've got to be honest, I'm finding it a bit of a surprise um, because really I think a lot of people have written the 66ers off, but from your performances so far, because they're not just lucky wins, these are well-deserved uh, uh, wins. Sam, I don't know if you've got anything to add on that one. Um, I mean, to be honest, I, I, I was saying... Uh, before I I saw that as an easy win and you know it, it didn't work out that way I mean my quarterback threw for over 300 yards I yeah. think my wide receiver winter he had 200 nearly 250 yards um in receiving just couldn't get it in the end zone that's all it was it just yeah. it, and I think that's it's probably going to be 
the story of my season is that is that I'll throw it a lot and it'll I'll make a lot of yards, but just won't get it in the end zone. Yeah. Well, I'm um, predicting here and now Craig is one of the teams to watch. He is my dark horse for actually getting into the playoffs. There you go. Uh, you've heard it first here. Okay, moving mo- moving on. Massives against the Knights. Uh, Massives 22, Knights 12. Um, again here, a uh, big push in the fourth quarter um, from the Massive. Um, basically, after the Knights gave up a safety, and we don't get very many safeties, uh, in gridiron, but the, the Knights gave up a safety in the third quarter, then everything was all square from that moment on. Uh, and basically what happened is there were two goal line touchdowns. I think it was a two yard and a one yard or two yard and an inches uh, that sealed the game here. Um, good solid win um, and the, the massive move on. Knights, uh, again, they had a good victory last week, but again, inter-divisional rivals, um, rivalry is one thing, um, and as you can see, uh, maybe getting found out a little bit. Who knows? Uh, Eagles against the Titans. Oh my god, 2020. Wow. If, if we don't have very many safeties, we sure as hell don't have very many ties <laughs> in this one. Can't remember a, a tie for quite a while now. Um, did, didn't I have one? Did I? No, it was the year before, I think I had a tie. Yeah, it was a couple of years back, I yeah. think. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I mean, basically what happened with this one is James's Titans rushed into a, a 10-point lead um, at half time, And it looked as if the game was pretty much heading their way. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, it's a bit of a very strange game, this. I commented the other week about uh, James as his quarterback. And again, unfortunately, Dud- Duddington uh, had a bit of a nightmare of a game. Uh, again, only completing about one in three. Um, again, a very poor rating. Uh, and to offset that, the Eagles decided to give them as much help as they possibly could by giving away 75 yards worth of penalties. You know, and then my rushing back doesn't go for 75 yards in a bloody game. So uh, if somebody would like to give me 75 yards of penalties, I'll take them. Um, again, 2020, couldn't split the two teams, cracking game. Uh, great for the fans, as they say. <laughs> okay, Buccaneers against the Shadows next game on uh, 31-20 to the Bucs um, and it looks as if the Bucs rebuild is actually going pretty much according to plan here uh, the Bucs are going very very steady um, making good progress again, um, the Shadows having said that, uh, did manage to move the ball further, <laughs> again another losing team that moved the ball further uh, next match on my list is Chargers against the Maroons. Um, here, uh, after a close game uh, the previous week, Chris's Chargers really weren't weren't really in this one. Uh, they were 13-3 down at half time. Um, have to say, Scott's team once again put up a very solid performance, a nice solid win, uh, and basically the Maroons go marching on quite nicely. Hornets against the Statesmen. Hornets 26, Statesman 21. Uh, a cracking game, this one. Um, many of us, myself included, predicted that this could be the sort of the pre-runner, uh, the, the dress rehearsal, as it were, for the the um, conference championship game. Um, you know, the, the, uh, but to be quite honest now, Lee's lost two on the trot. Um, so unless something happens to change his fortunes, there is a there is a bit of a danger that he may well um, slip uh, down the rankings, as it were. Um, I, I think he's fine. I think he, he got a motivational coach in. It sounds like I think that post you know bowl drought. I think he's he's going to come out of that very strong. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, Lee has a fantastic, solid team there. Yeah. Uh, but as a good win by the Hornets. Um, could have gone either way, to be quite honest. I think really the difference was once again, Mr. Tripson, uh, MVP of the game. Um, and he is very difficult, as I can personally <laughs> say, to, to mark and to keep out of the game. Uh, another 200 and odd yards for him, quite comfortable. Uh, and I think he was a difference between the two teams. Uh, the Rhinos uh, versus the Sharks, uh, 23-45. 
Benjamin Sharks go marching on. Um, have to say Benjamin is looking very, very good for the postseason here. Uh, he spent several te- seasons building up a good squad there uh, with his drafting policy, his trading policy, and it's 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 coming to fruition. I mean, the fact that he was 38-10 up at half time basically sums it all up. That sort of shows what sort of game it was, if you know what I mean. Uh, the Rivets against the Generals. Uh, Rivets 41, Generals 20. I think here probably Alex will be a little bit disappointed that he didn't push the rivets just that little bit further. Um, but uh, I wouldn't take to heart, Alex. I think it re- really what it shows uh, is that the rivets are still capable of beating absolutely anybody uh, on their day, and they're still the, the team we've got to beat. Stormers against the Devils, 35-7 win to the Stormers. Um, a relatively straightforward uh, outing here for Mark's team. Um, the fact that it was 451 yards against 86 yards uh, probably just about sums up the whole game, to be quite honest. Um, the Wheels also against the Irish, we're going to come on to in a second. Uh, and the Warriors against the Huskies, 23-10. A good, solid win here for Ambrose. Uh, basically, there are a few of us... Uh, Don, who are um, winless at the moment. So keep your chin up, mate. <laughs> um, it will happen. The one good thing that people haven't realised with us crafty, crafty so-and-sos that are remaining winless is that we're actually going for the first win bonus. Mm, good strategy. Right. And we are in a good position to get that. Kev, so, Kev, without wait, Kev, ado, well, before Kev. you go there, I literally finally get a shutout and you don't even talk about my game? No. What? I didn't. I did, I did not. Oh, that I thought. I, I thought. I thought you would be mentioning it, sir. Oh, is that what you got? You trapped me. <laughs> I, you have activated the trap card, and I have now. <laughs> my ego has gotten the best of me. Look, I don't get to talk nicely about the fire very often. Okay, you can't. Yeah, take well, go for it, it sir. Well, go I, for it. No, I want. I want your analysis now. You know, as the outside. Did, did you? Did you win? It was one of those games. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, I might. Mean, you know what? I'm putting extra study time into beating the Rushmores next week. That's all I'm going to say. Trust, trust me, that is time wasted. <laughs> <laughs> right. I said we we're going to have a look further at the uh, the weasels uh, against the Irish. So, without further ado, Sam. Yeah. So. Um... I had a look at quite obviously all the games and there were, I just sort of, I suppose, some honourable mentions for game of the week. The, the Eagles versus the Titans, obviously a tie game. That was that was one of the ones that was up there in contention. Um, as mentioned, the, the the Giant Hornets against the Statesmen, that again, you know, as we said, the potential prelude for the, um, for the you know, the championship match. Um, but I went with the, the Webster Super Weaver Source versus the uh, Letchwood Garden City Irish. Um, it was it finished 1819 and was possibly one of the I don't want to say it was necessarily a bad game, but there was a lot going on in it. I mean, we had we looked sort of straight at the, the quarterbacks. Um, I mean, both of them threw over 300 yards, which you know is, is pretty impressive to get 300 yards in, in a normal game, but to have two two quarterbacks in one game do it was was pretty impressive um but the the other side of that was there was both of them had four interceptions so you know whether whether that's uh, a good thing or not they could throw 300 yards or whether they were just being you know just going for it and thinking we need to get we need to get this win um but yeah four four interceptions each um 12 turnovers in in total in the whole game um and uh, uh, going into the fourth quarter, I mean, City Irish were down uh, 18-7 and, and managed to pull it back. Um, although, I mean, they, they also again missed four um, field goal attempts. So it was, it was a very, a very strange game, but it, 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 it seemed to, it had everything going for it. And it just felt like it needed to be, you know, the game of the week um, and, a, a, you know, a great win for, um, for the for the Irish um, against you know what could have been a, a a bit of a banana skin in in terms of the the end result really but yeah it was a, for me it was a, it was the game of the week 
That's a great yeah, pick. I agree with you, Sam. When I looked at it, I thought, oh, this is, it was a weird game. Because I said the other week that you can't lose if you give away six uh, turnovers. And of course, they decided to prove me wrong by giving away six. <laughs> well, it you know, like, you... go ahead. Sorry. No, it's like you win. No, yeah. go on, you go and win. No, you go and win. You know. Well, you know, I think I think there's also a good reminder, especially for any new coaches or coaches that have been around for a long time but don't focus on special teams. You know, the Brothers Hastings have put together a pretty awesome slide on special teams, like two slides. Um, there's a part one and a part two. Um, I'll try to put a link in the videos this week to those documents, uh, those slides, because uh, this just points – there's quite a few games this week, right, that we saw where there were big misses on field goals and things like that. I think special teams – Look at Lee. I uh, sorry, not Lee. Uh, look at the rivets, right? Conrad's special teams is is just the best, and that's part of why he's so successful because he starts the ball so far ahead. He, you know, he has great field position, and then he gets field goals, right? It's and when you have a whole third of your game that no one is competing with you, and you know, I think everyone would do well to go back to the basics and look at some of the numbers that you know Todd and Tad have put together read the rule book on yourself by yourself if you want, but I think they do a nice synopsis that will help get your, your special teams together. Um, so. What I think um, might be an idea, sorry to interrupt Patrick, but whilst we've got Sam here, it might be an idea to grill him, I think. And, uh, oh, as, yeah. as he's our guest, ask him, ask him a few questions. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Kev, did you have I'm a rare a... UK or a Scottish earthquake? Is that? Yeah. It was, okay. Yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> Uh, so okay yeah i i totally did not prepare these questions that i'm about to ask sam all right <laughs> sam um yeah you know a thank you for being here you know really appreciate it obviously you know we're in the same division together i've enjoyed our games because you know we're very closely matched at the moment and uh and i think you know we were talking earlier the lfc east definitely has become kind of a very competitive division you know lee is always strong the phoenix were very strong before chris left and have you know the coach seems to have picked it up there ian uh, you and I are really pushing and growing our teams, you know, to try to kind of come back from a rebuild, at least for me. Um, and so we really appreciate you ha you being here and, and, and um, excited to ask you some questions. So first of all, it's your second season as the head coach of the Sun Devils. Um, what did you learn in the first season uh, that you've brought to the second and you're going to continue doing? Um, I think the one thing for me, I mean, obviously coming in just only really knowing you know, just from an, just knowing the like the NFL and how the NFL works, and thinking, you know, the way that the games are played, it's usually first down you rush, second you you maybe rush or throw, and then third you dip again. And I, I was trying to do the perfect offense, and it wasn't working because my 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 uh, running backs are dreadful <laughs> uh, for the most part. Well, one of them's getting better now, but for the most part, they weren't very good. Um. So I think for me, the one big thing is to play to your strengths. Know what your team, know, knowing your team and playing to their strengths. I have a, I have, I think he was voted, um, he, was, he was in the, well, he was in the, pro, the, the Pro Bowl last year um, in my wide receiver winter. He was, mm -hmm. he was absolutely fantastic for me. Um, and all I now try and do is just throw, throw it to him and, and hope yeah. he does the, does the work, which he does. Um, so for me, that was really important is knowing your strengths and playing to your strengths. And um, the other part was um, how I was quite surprised at how important the uh, development uh, squads are in terms of developing new teams, especially those rookies that mm -hmm. aren't quite perfect. You know, their Q the QSTs aren't, aren't what you want them to be. But you, I, I think my perfect example is my, I, I wanted a, a very strong running back. So I, I picked up a a shaky QST running back, and I've developed him into what I want. And now he's to me is what I would exactly what I want in, in a running back. So to me, you know, development squads are very important, and I always think it's a good thing, good to make sure that you use it in your coaching uh, each week. Yeah, absolutely, that's awesome. Yeah, thanks. Um, so R and R sends you an email. Uh, they want you, Sam Andrews, well, they're very impressed by your performance. They want you to design the entire next year's draft class. And you have the first pick. You've designed this draft pack and dra draft uh, class and you have the first pick. Who are you picking? Um, uh, this what this was a question. This is a, a very hard question to, to answer, really, because if I was going sensible, 
it would be a a, an, a defensive lineman. But if, in I went with a probably I think an eighty an eighty zero twenty wide receiver to match Winter. You know, okay. just a really fast wide receiver just to keep those you know passing yards at over three hundred every single game and hopefully get in the end zone a bit more. Nice. Um, I think that would be because again, you know. I always think, you know, the more you can throw it, the more chance you have of winning a game, hopefully. But yeah, yeah. A, a high, a high, um, a high Q wide receiver, level nine, sticky hand, uh, sticky hands. Yeah, that's probably nice. what I'd want. Yeah, that's a great pick. That's great. Um, awesome. So, last question. Um, I noticed in your schedule you have the Bombers as your key game. Um, can you tell me about that? you know, the decision that went into that? Yeah, um, I mean, I think coming off of last season, I had a very difficult um, uh, schedule. And I thought, I look, when I look, when the, obviously the schedule came out for this year, I'd, I had a look at it and I thought, opening game, 50-50 could go either way with a fire. I thought, you know, chance of being one up. I did underestimate the 66 as thinking, you know, I could be two up, at the, I could be two and oh at this point. Um and then obviously the Hornets are a, a much more difficult, difficult game. So I chose, I chose the Bombers as, as my, I suppose, key game because I thought this is going to be the game which decides how my season's going to go in terms of at this point, this is where I'm going to be. They were an 0 10 team last year. They are currently an 0 2. They're, it's a win game. It's a, mm-hmm. you know, I shouldn't be losing that game. So to me, it was the key game from a, I need to win that game sort of perspective. Um, yeah. Whether it be because I'm 0-2 or whether it's because I'm 2-0. Do you, do you think there's a possibility that you maybe even use that as kind of a first win bonus yeah. there? Yeah. Looking at it now, looking at obviously at the situation I'm in now, to me, it's that's going to be where I, I probably will get my first win. So, Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's probably going to be that. It, to me, it's a key key game in, in terms of how my season's going to end up. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for answering the questions and it's good to get to know you a little better. And, uh, you know, we, we really appreciate you coming. We appreciate all the people who are viewing and the people who volunteer to, to come talk and, and respond to Kev's emails. Uh, and, um, you know, I, this has been a great show. We appreciate it. Uh, obviously now we're headed into a long break. Um, I think we have a good two and a half weeks, I think something like that until, till our next game um we c- plan on continuing to have episodes uh, in between um next week we'll be uh probably talking about the upcoming week three games and give some predictions there maybe talk about you know what the division standings look like and things like that and where we're where we think things are heading um and uh yeah you know we really appreciate everybody watching we appreciate sam for you coming and kes uh yeah. as always thank you for for helping organize everything and um yeah, does anybody have anything else to, to end up our, our No, I'd just like to reciprocate what you said there. Thanks, Sam, for coming along. And obviously you'll be along before the end of the season again. You didn't know that before now, but you will. <laughs> <laughs> that's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Well, yeah, thank you everyone. Have a wonderful week and take care. Bye. Yeah. Bye guys. Bye now. Bye.